There is a new game on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, and it's called The Finals. And now it's free to play, and the crazy thing is, it's breaking the Steam charts already, coming in the top three games played concurrently and getting near 200,000 players consistently. And it's only in beta at the moment, and it's gonna be released later on this year. So if you want to get a PC ready for the finals, what CPU, what GPU configuration are you going to be looking at at 1080p, 1440p, or 4K? Well, if you're looking for that, we've got you covered in today's video. We're gonna be doing a heap of different benchmarking. We're gonna be enabling DLSS, FSR2, and doing a quality comparison too. And the best thing about this game is the developers, they made the original Battlefield games and they got sick of EA. And I mean, one can only wonder why people would get sick of working for a greedy corporation like EA and decide to make their own studio, but then also use the Unreal Engine 5 and make a game that is extremely smooth with very good visuals and very good FPS. But let's get into all of that right after today's video sponsor. Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in description below. So the game called The Finals is currently in beta access, open beta, and you can play it for another couple of days. I think the beta access ends on either Sunday or Monday, depending on where you live in the world. And you can download this, it's only 14 gigabytes in size, and it's free to play. So there's nothing that'll have to come out of your wallet if you wanna test this game out. I've actually been playing it, really enjoying what I'm seeing so far. The gameplay is unique, it's very intuitive, and the battles feel really consistent with the registry being on point. Though right before we get into these benchmarks, make sure you smash that like button and also hit that sub button if you appreciate the work that we do around Tech Yes City. So as we hinted at before, this game is very well optimized from what I'm seeing so far. However, there's actually no minimum required specifications as to what hardware you should use. Since it's in beta, they're still getting a rough idea as to what you need, but we've tested it with two different CPUs here and both an i9-10900K and an i7-4790. And what we're seeing here with core utilization and thread count is it uses it extremely well. Even with an RTX 3060 on a 10900K, we'll see 20% utilization on this CPU. This is actually four years old, the 10900K now. So if you've got a better CPU, you will even get lower utilization. Now, the i7-4790, we tested this with a GTX 1060, and we were getting an extremely playable experience at both 1080p and then 1080p turning on FSR2. And we'll get onto the comparison of DLSS and FSR2 a little bit later, but both these upscaling technologies actually work extremely well in this game, being both great options if you wanna get more FPS and not lose really hardly any visual fidelity in this particular title. Now let's get onto the GPU benchmarks here. Well, we tested at 4K, 1440p, and 1080p with three different graphics cards just to get an idea of how AMD and Nvidia perform in this title. And here's the good news where at 1080p, you'll get extremely playable frame rates on all three of these cards, the 1060, the 3060, and the RX 6700. If you want to put on FSR2, all these cards will get a significant increase in performance. And then if you've got an RTX 2000, 3000, 4000 series card, you can turn on DLSS2. And it's gonna do a great job of producing more FPS. And we were actually surprised because when we first started up the game, DLSS2 was on and we just didn't notice it. And then we turned it off and we're like, hmm, there wasn't really much of a difference there. Though there's even more good news with this game and it comes in the form of ray tracing where usually most games I'll just turn ray tracing completely off because the FPS hit is so massive. You'll go from some games 150 FPS all the way down to 60 and you'll be like, why did I turn this setting on? But this game, actually you're losing a minuscule amount of FPS for the visual fidelity increase you're getting. I mean, just look at this sword and the reflections on it. It actually looks beautiful with ray tracing turned on. So this may be one of the first games that comes out that's gonna be a competitive game, free to play, really good FPS, and you might wanna just turn on ray tracing just to have a lot of fun with it. Then moving on to 1440p, here's where the RX 6700 actually does really well. Same with the RTX 3060, 
but in comparison to the 1080p numbers, the RX 6700 does start to do a little bit better. And then we move on to the 1060. If you turn on FSR2, you can still get a playable 60 FPS at 1440p. So again, showing that you can get really high frame rates even with mid-range cards, or even with an entry card like a 1060, you still get 60 FPS experience. So that's looking really good. And then having ray tracing on, is still giving you out over 120 FPS on the AMD RX 6700 with FSR turned on. Then we move on to 4K. This is where you can get on both the RX 6700 and the RTX 3060 a really playable experience with DLSS 2 on, or of course, having FSR 2 turned on. If you decide to turn these on to native, then the uh, FPS will actually be quite low, but this is where the upscaling technique really comes in to favor higher FPS numbers and just give you an overall great experience, even if you're playing on 4K with a mid-range GPU. But I'm sure this is gonna make a lot of people happy if you've got an RTX 3090 or an RTX 4080 or anything like that, and the new 7900 XTX, you're gonna get an absolutely amazing experience at 4K, even with native. So there's higher end GPUs, they're gonna have no problems running this game. And even if you've got a mid-range GPU, you can finesse the settings and still get a 4K playable experience. So the final comparison we are going to pull up now is going into the detailed comparison image side by side by side by side with Intel's XS, XESS, XS. So I'm a little bit confused on that one. I think it's XS, we'll just go with that. DLSS2, FSR2, and then native. And here's where I slightly preferred the DLSS2 versus the FSR2, but I preferred FSR2 over Intel's XS as well. So I think if you've got say a GTX 1060 or some of those older cards, you could really benefit from AMD's FSR2. And of course, if you've got the DLSS2 available, I would go with that and turn that on for that FPS boost. Or of course, if you just got those behemoth cards, you can just run native, but I just found the differences actually weren't that big in this game. And actually speaking of differences, the low settings was actually very impressive and a great experience. I know some games I boot up low settings. For instance, Fortnite would be one that comes to mind. The difference between low settings and high settings is just night and day. It looks so much different between those two quality settings. Here with the finals between low and high, high does look better, but low doesn't look as bad as other games would look. So do let us know in the comments what you guys think about the comparison. I know it's YouTube compression and it's gonna be dulled down a bit, but if you turn it on maybe 4K settings on your TV and you can maybe be able to see a difference there, do let us know which one you preferred in the comments. Anyhow guys, with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed today's benchmark comparison. This game is going to be a big hit on PC, especially I think it's also gonna be a hit on the consoles as well, being free to play and just Playing this game from Embark Studios, that's the new studio they made, they've done a phenomenal job. And it's very well optimized, it's using the latest Unreal Engine 5, and honestly there was lots of hype surrounding this game, and I just think they've over-delivered already. Being a beta, it just had fluid uh, movement, the gameplay was fluid, the 0.1% lows were extremely good, except for this one anomaly we had at 1080p with the RX 6700 at native, but Besides that, it's just going to be a very good game on final release that's going to bring a big smile to your face. And if you like PC gaming, this is definitely a game to jump on the beta while you can and look out for. And also if you access it before the open beta closes, you get some cool exclusives too. So worth checking out there. Anyhow guys, with all that out of the way, I hope you enjoyed today's comparison. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below. If you have any questions or comments about today's testing, then be sure to ask and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Just like this question of the day here, which comes from Nikolay Yunkovich, and they ask, so if we reduce video card consumption, they're talking about power consumption, will it make it safe for the cable? And they're talking about the RTX 4000 series cards here, mainly the 4080 and 4090. Is the risk of melting the cable reduced? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. Uh, basically it's heat that makes the card or the cable melt. And so you reduce the power, you're reducing the heat, you can reduce the chance of a melting cable, which is why on the RTX 4000 series cards, especially the 4080 and 4090, if you go back and check out some of my reviews, I always recommend undervolting these cards. And even with AMD's 7900 XTX and 7900 XT and 7800 XT, I recommend undervolting because you're just gaining so much efficiency 
when you do this, and that's all got to do with statistics and standard deviations, but chances are you're going to be able to undervolt quite well and extract a lot of gain out of it. If you wanna check out more, I'll put some links up here for you guys. And with that aside, if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, you know what to do, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.